history of banking in India and its evolution in modern times. Banking consists of many activities that can be done through a number of financial institutions that accept deposits from individuals and other entities and then use this money to offer loans and to invest and earn profit. History Modern banking in India originated in the mid of 18th century among the first banks with the Bank of Hindustan which was established in 1770 and liquidated in 1829 to 32 and the General Bank of India established in 1786 but failed in 1791 the largest and the oldest bank which is still in existence is the State Bank of India SBI it originated and started working as the Bank of Calcutta in mid June 1806 in 1809 it was renamed the Bank of Bengal we have discussed about this bank in our previous video. You can find the link to the video in the description box below. Before we learn more about this industry, we urge you to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and do not forget to press the bell icon. Ancient India the Vedas, which are the ancient Indian texts, mention the concept of interest with the word Kusidin, translated as Yushirar. The sutras and the jatakas also mention usury. The Manusmriti considered interest an acceptable means of acquiring wealth or leading a livelihood. The jatakas, dharma shastras, and kautilya also mention the existence of loan deeds called napatra, napana, and nalekhaya. Later, during the modern period, an instrument called Adesha was in use, which was an order on a banker directing him to pay the sum on a note to the third person, which corresponds to the definition of modern bill of exchange. In large towns, merchants also gave letters of credit to one another. Medieval period, the use of loan deeds continued into the Mughal era and were called Dastavez in Urdu, Hindi. There are also records of Indian bankers issuing bills of exchange on foreign countries. The evolution of Hundis, a type of credit instrument, also occurred during the period and remained in use. Colonial era. During the period of British rule, merchants established the Union Bank of Calcutta in 1829, first as a private joint stock association, then a partnership. Its proprietors were the owners of the earlier commercial bank and the Calcutta Bank, who, by mutual Mutual consent created Union Bank to replace these two banks. In 1840, the bank revealed that it had been the subject of fraud by the bank's accountant. Union Bank was incorporated in 1845 but failed in 1848, having been insolvent for some time and having used new money from depositors to pay its dividends. The Allahabad Bank, established in 1865 and still functioning today, is the oldest joint stock bank in India, though it was not the first that honor belongs to the Bank of Upper India, which was established in 1863 and survived until 1913, when it failed, with some of its assets and liabilities being transferred to the Alliance Bank of Shimla. In the 1860s, foreign banks too started to appear, particularly in Calcutta. Grinley's Bank opened its first branch in Calcutta in 1864. The Comptoir de Escompte de Paris opened a bank in Calcutta in 1860 and another in Bombay in 1862. Calcutta was the most active trading port in India, mainly due to the trade of the British Empire and so became a banking sector. The first entirely Indian joint stock bank was the Old Commercial Bank, established in 1881 in Faizabad. It failed in 1958. Then, Punjab National Bank was established in Lahore in 1894, which has survived to the present and is now one of the largest banks in India. Around the turn of the 20th century, as the Indian economy passed through a relative period of stability, Indians established small banks, most of which served particular ethnic and religious communities. The period between 1906 and 1911 saw the establishment of banks inspired by the Swadeshi movement. The Swadeshi movement inspired local businessmen and political figures to establish bank of and for the Indian community. A number of banks established at that time have survived to the present, such as Catholic Siren Bank, the South Indian Bank, Bank of India, Corporation Bank, Indian Bank, Bank, Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank, and Central Bank of India. The First World War, 1914 to 1918, through the end of the Second World War, 1939 to 1945, and two years thereafter until independence of India were challenging years for the Indian banking sector. The years for the First World War were turbulent, and it took its toll with banks simply collapsing despite the Indian economy gaining indirect boost due to world war-related economic activities. At least 94 banks in India failed between 1913 and 1918, as indicated in the following table. 
The Reserve Bank of India, India's central banking authority, was established in April 1935 but was nationalized on 1st January 1949 under the terms of the Reserve Bank of India Transfer to Public Ownership Act 1948. In 1949, the Banking Regulation Act was enacted which empowered the RBI to regulate, control and inspect the banks in India. The Banking Regulation Act also provided that no new bank or branch of an existing bank could be opened without a license from the RBI and no two banks could have common directors. Nationalization By the 1960s, the Indian banking industry had become an important tool to facilitate the development of Indian economy. At the same time, it had emerged as a large employer and a debate had ensued about nationalization of the banking industry. Thereafter, the Government of India issued the Banking Companies Acquisition and Transfer of Undertakings Ordinance 1969 and nationalized the 14 largest commercial banks with effect from midnight of 19 July 1969. These banks contained 85% of bank deposits in the country. The banks that were nationalized in 1969 were Allahabad Bank, now Indian Bank, Bank of Baroda, Bank of India, Bank of Maharashtra, Central Bank of India, Canara Bank, Dena Bank, now Bank of Baroda, Indian Bank, Indian Overseas Bank, Punjab National Bank, Syndicate Bank, now Canara Bank, UCO Bank, Union Bank of India, United Bank of India, now Punjab National Bank. A second round of nationalizations of six more commercial banks followed in 1980. With this, the government of India controlled around 91% of the banking business of India. The banks nationalized this time Punjab and Sindh Bank, Vijaya Bank, now Bank of Baroda, Oriental Bank of Commerce, now Punjab National Bank, Corporation Bank, now Union Bank of India, Andhra Bank, now Union Bank of India, and New Bank of India, now Punjab National Bank. Liberalization. In the early 1990s, the then government embarked on a policy of liberalization licensing a small number of private banks which came to be known as the new generation tech-savvy banks and included Global Trust Bank, the first of such new generation banks to be set up, which later amalgamated with Oriental Bank of Commerce, Indusin Bank, UTI Bank, since renamed Access Bank, ICICI Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank and HDFC Bank. This move, along with rapid growth in the economy of India, revitalized the banking sector in India, which has seen a rapid growth with a strong contribution from all three sectors of bank, namely government banks, private banks and foreign banks. The banks which were licensed and started operations during the period included the Times Bank, Centurion Bank and the Bank of Punjab. They had to be merged with stronger banks. The RBI also licensed a new set of banks known as small finance banks. Small finance banks are a category of banks in India that primarily cater to the financial needs of small businesses, low-income households and individuals in unbanked and underbanked areas of the country. The purpose of SFBs is to promote financial inclusion by providing basic banking services like savings account, deposits, loans and remittances to underserved sections of the society. The Reserve Bank of India, RBI, granted in principle approval of 10 entities to set up SFBs in September 2015. These entities include Ujivan Financial Services, Equitas Holding and Janalakshmi Financial Services among others. RBI allowed these entities to set up SFBs with the objective of providing a more focused and differentiated banking approach to the sector. As of now, all the 10 entities that were granted approval to set up SFBs have been licensed to operate as banks by the RBI. Out of these five entities, AU Small Finance Bank, Equita Small Finance Bank, Jeevan Small Finance Bank, ESAF Small Finance Bank, and Suryode Small Finance Bank have gone public by listing on the stock exchanges. Two other NBFCs were given licenses to convert themselves into universal banks, namely Bandhan Bank and the IDFC Bank. Both of these are already significant size banks. Overall, SFBs have played a crucial role in promoting financial inclusion in India by providing basic banking services to underprivileged sections of the society. With the support of the government and the RBI, SFBs expected to continue their growth trajectory and make banking more accessible and inclusive in the country. The banking industry had several bad loans and some banks were in difficulty due to excessive lending to certain sector, like real estate, infrastructure and others. In April 2020, RBI enlisted RBI to rescue the troubled lender Yes Bank in the form of investment with assistance from other lenders, namely ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank. 
SBI went on to own 48% share capital of Yes Bank, which it later diluted to 30% in an FPO in the following months. Then, in November 2020, RBI asked DBS Bank India Limited (DBIL) to take over the operations of the private sector bank Lakshmi Vilas Bank, whose net worth has turned negative following mismanagement and two failed merger attempts with NBFCs. DBS, having just 12 branches, benefited by LVB 559 branches. Earlier, there was a bank run of the Punjab and the Maharashtra Cooperative Bank. In January 2022, RBI asked Unity Small Finance Bank Limited (Unity SFB) to take over the operations of the private sector bank Punjab and Maharashtra Cooperative Bank following mismanagement and one failed merger attempt. NBFC SFBs. Industry overview: The banking sector of the country has the capability to heavily influence the development of the country's economy. It is also instrumental in the development of rural and suburban regions of the country as it provides capital for small businesses and helps them to grow their business. Initiatives taken by the Reserve Bank and the Government of India in order to promote the financial inclusion have considerably improved the access to the formal financial institutions. Thus, the banking sector of the country is very significant not only for economic growth but also for promoting economic equality structure of the indian banking system the reserve bank of india is the central bank of the country and regulates the banking system of the country the structure of banking system in india can be broadly divided into scheduled banks non scheduled banks and development banks scheduled banks banks that are included in the second schedule of the reserve bank of india act 1934 are considered to be scheduled banks and all scheduled banks enjoy facilities such as becoming eligible for debts loans on the bank rate from the RBI and also automatically acquire the membership of a clearing house non scheduled banks all banks which are not included in the second section of the RBI act 1934 are non scheduled banks these banks are not eligible to borrow from the RBI for normal banking purposes except for emergencies scheduled banks are further divided into commercial and cooperative banks commercial banks these institutions accept deposits from the general public and advance loans with the purpose of earning profit commercial banks can also be broadly classified into public sector private sector foreign banks and rrbs public sector banks in these banks the majority stake is held by the government to the recent amalgamation of smaller banks with larger banks there are 12 public sector banks in india as of now an example of a public sector bank is the state bank of india private sector banks these are the banks where the majority stakes in the equity are owned by private stakeholders or business houses a few major private sector banks in india are hdfc bank kotak mahindra bank icici bank etc we have discussed about these banks in a previous video you can find the link of these videos in the description box below foreign banks it is a bank that has its headquarters outside the country but runs its offices as a private entity at any other location outside the country such banks are under the obligation to operate under the regulations provided by the central bank of the country as well as the rule prescribed by the parent organization located outside india an example of foreign bank in india is city bank generally these banks are branches of a foreign bank some of these banks are being encouraged to incorporate in india regional rural banks these banks were established under the regional rural bank ordinance 1975 with the aim of ensuring sufficient institutional credit for agriculture and other rural sectors the area of operation of rrbs is limited to the area notified by the government rrbs are owned jointly by the government of india the state government and sponsor banks an example of rrb in india is arunachal pradesh rural bank cooperative banks A cooperative bank is a financial entity that belongs to its members who are also the owners as well as the customers of the bank. They provide their members with numerous banking and financial services. Cooperative banks are the primary supporters of agricultural activities, some small scale industries and self-employed workers. An example of cooperative bank in India is Mahesana Urban Cooperative Bank. At the ground level, individuals come together to form a credit cooperative society. The individuals in the society include an association of borrowers and non-borrowers residing in a particular locality and taking interest in the business affairs of one another. As membership is practically open to all inhabitants of the locality, people of different status are brought together into a common organization. All the societies in an area come together to form a central cooperative bank.
Cooperative banks are further divided into two categories, urban and rural. Rural cooperative banks, these are either short term or long term. Short term cooperative banks can be subdivided into state cooperative banks, district general cooperative banks, primary agricultural credit societies, whereas long term banks are either state cooperative agriculture and rural development banks, primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks. Urban Cooperative Banks UCBs. These refer to primary cooperative banks located in urban and semi-urban areas. Development Banks Financial institutions that provide long-term credit in order to support capital-intensive investments spread over a long period and yield low rates of return with considerable social benefits are known as development banks. The major development banks in India are the Industrial Finance Corporation of India IFCI Limited, Industrial Development Bank of India IDBI, Export Import Bank of India Exim, Small Industries Development Bank of India SIDBI, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development NABAD. In our next video, we will look into the current status of the Indian banking sector. Please make sure to like and subscribe the video and press the notification bell so that you never miss out an update from us. Thank you.